to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, welcome back, Wi Fi's, to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman still coming to you from room 303. For now. But go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> And click the notification bell for notifications of when I upload new material and when I go live, like I told y'all, after the new year. I make no promises on consistency for a little while until I settle in my new city. So you need to have that bell selected to all notifications. So that way, whenever I do drop some some new stuff, you'll be up on things all right i'm letting my little secret out of the bag the cat is out of the bag now today i generally never appear before the camera without any makeup on but i did today and now everyone knows that i actually really don't need it huh? Huh? for all the men that told me i wear too much makeup jokes on you i never even really needed it I did, however, pause the video to go put on a little bit of mascara. Like Jasmine Sullivan says, you got to keep a little bit of that in your pocket. Or else you'll be walking around looking like a naked mole rat with no eyelashes. And you know what? A lot of men love to complain about women in these eyelashes, and I must agree. Some folks have taken it a little too far. Okay, way too far. But as much as y'all love to act like you don't love lashes, you do. You do. It adds a certain feminine flair to women, gives us a distinction from being men. And as much as y'all love to criticize us for stuff, trust me, the only reason why women are walking around wearing that stuff is because men are attracted to it. If men were not attracted to it, we would stop. We would stop. That would defeat the whole purpose. You know, <laughs> we're not sitting around with each other like, girl, them lashes, though. Ooh, them lashes. Like, we don't care about stuff like that. I think in a lot of ways, women would be men if it wasn't for the competition for men. It forces us to have to put a little bit of padding in a bra or, you know, wear a waist trainer or you know, some women have gotten into these super, super toxic diets and uh, diuretics and uh, supplements. That's it. A lot of women have gotten into some very toxic supplements, trying to like lose weight and keep weight down. These women with these BBLs have to go in the gym and do a whole lot of uh, squats and, you know, re rear leg thrusts and stuff like that, trying to keep the booty meat tight enough to hold the implants up and stuff. It's, it's a super competitive world out here for a woman trying to be attractive to men. I mean, I'm glad I'm past that time or over it because, yeah, yeah, once a woman reaches a certain age, you got to be coming with something else. You got to know how to bake a pie. You got to, <laughs> yeah, you got to be coming with some wisdom, some intelligence, and your finances together, kids grown, something. You, you got to be coming with something else because that whole BBL, all, keeping up with all that, that's like a 35 and below type of endeavor. And this wasn't the video that I came on here to do, but I guess it's the video that y'all are going to get. So you will listen to every damn word I have to say! Because it's what I'm talking about when I got on here. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. This is very true. And you have both sides, both men and women, saying, well, you're getting what you like. There are so many pookies and ray rays because this is what you like. You know, women are firing back that a lot of the treatment 
that men are getting from women? Uh, well, this is what they like. I know for a fact because men choose privileged women. And I did my episode on pretty privilege that um, when you're dealing with privileged people, you're going to get a certain type of treatment. You're going to be dealing with the narcissists of society. The people who have gotten the most in exchange for the least amount of effort are not necessarily going to be the model citizens of society. But what I'm finding is that social media has reduced a lot of things in relationships down to surface level criteria that really doesn't actually uh, lead to any long-term happiness or success in said relationship. I was watching a video by a lady where she was speaking about how, you know, you can't be choosing men who are attractive or who have money because because what exactly? Listen, I think that there are people who are just right for each other. It doesn't matter if we think their reasons for compatibility are surface. If both of those people are deep as a puddle, they deserve each other. Okay? We have to stop feeling like we can judge the criteria of what's going to create success in a relationship from a blurb on a dating app. I'm finding that people are really treating people <laughs> like the 500 character limit on a dating app, like just asking questions right off the top to be able to eliminate people. Um, and don't get me wrong, vetting is important. Very important. I just met a guy. He said up front that he had four kids. I was like, Ooh. some would say that's a red flag. I gave it a yellow flag just, just to kind of see what we were dealing with. Then he said he had a room. He was living in a rooming house with some other folks. Oh, red flag, red flag right there. You know, there are some things that you as a woman, based on your age, your criteria for a partner, you can go ahead and single out. But some things... People are getting real ridiculous about what type of criteria it takes to be with them. Because then you get this person who's with you and they're not enough of the things you actually really want. You got to have a matrix of things that you cannot live without in a mate. And those things cannot be physical or financial. I will say this, though. I do believe that black women need to start putting a whole lot more financial criteria into how they date men. Because once you get up to 30, 35, 40, 45 as a woman and retirement age <laughs> is upon you, is looming in the background, then yeah, you need someone that you're not still trying to build together with at 40. You need someone that has enough ambition and work ethic to have accomplished a certain amount of things in their lives by about 35, I would say at least as a man. You know, they can be late bloomers, but that ain't got nothing to do with us. Okay. The thing about submission is that men want it without ever having learned how to operate under it. It's like having a manager that doesn't know what your job is because they've never done it, but their job is to manage you doing that job when they have no idea what it entails. When I first started working at the sheriff's office, I was a uh, correctional officer, detention officer, prison guard, whatever. Um, and if you go back and watch my episode with Maurice Gillespie, he was one of my inmates. So it's, hey, you know, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. I know I'm so delicate and beautiful and sweet and kind. It's hard to ever have thought about me with a gun and a badge, but all the same. Um, part of our training was that we had to spend time in a cell. Uh, in order for us to learn how to search cells and get an idea of the types of places that inmates would hide things, they wanted us to be able to think like an inmate. And so we had to spend time inside of empty cells. And when they closed that door on you, 
there's a realization that sets in about your confinement. If you've never in your life been a person who has had to stay in a space, in a place against your will, it it can be um, very disturbing, a very disturbing experience. And I'm grateful for them taking that approach of locking us inside of a cell because it did help you to kind of understand the psyche of your inmates. Your job was to keep them under confinement, to be um, in control of their custody. And it's hard to be a custodian of people whose situation, whose plight you don't understand. And I know I'm going like around the way to make a point, but if my son's going to come back here in this home and household, it's going to be for the purpose of understanding how a household should run, understanding the position and roles of everyone in the household. That's the only way he's going to ever effectively be a man over anybody's household, even his own. He's got to be submitted first. And there used to be a process between men and women prior to how we date now. Men were vetted by other men. There would be a father in that household that would submit the boyfriend or the husband to whatever his rules and regulations were for his daughters. I'm dating a man now who has daughters, and I see that. I've never seen that in my own processes with my father, but I see it in his. And I said that to him. I was like, you just want these boys to be scared of you. And he was like, well, any young man who is taking out the daughter of another man should be scared of that man. Eh, I don't know. You know, I I have my feelings about it. But one thing about me is I'm not going to step into a space that's a man's space. But you got so many men that are stepping over into female women's spaces who will admit that they don't understand women. (laughs) you've already lost the ability to have dominion over them. Even when you look at animal trainers and, you know, these men, because animal trainers are in large part male, they know how important it is to have an understanding with that animal, to have a bond with them. And for the trainers who are not able to establish that type of understanding with their animals, they will they will refuse to train those animals. They'll, you know, put the animals back out into the wild, whatever the case may be. Because those trainers will understand if I can't establish a trust with this animal, where this animal trusts me and I can also trust that animal, then I'm I'm not going to bring that animal into my program. You look at Siegfried and Roy. And wasn't it Roy? Somebody got attacked by got attacked by one of them tigers. Okay, yeah. So in 2003, Roy got attacked by the tiger. And it's all and it all comes from that breakdown in trust. There's nothing, no creature that will stay under the submission and dominion of any other creature when there is not an established trust. We have to stop reducing people down to surface level things because you can't build deep, loving, trusting relationships with that. Like I have met tons of men. They will hear me say things like I have three children. Oh, she's out. I've been married and divorced twice. Oh, she's out. And not even think about what goes into it. And I tell people that my situation is complex, but it is not complicated. You know, I live a relatively drama free life. I (laughs) took, I've got a lot of ambition about myself. I'm very fiscally responsible. You know, and these are the questions I never get asked. I never, I have never as a black woman been asked my credit score. I have never been asked 
how much debt I'm carrying. Never, even by men that would one day become my husband. I've never been asked what my philosophies are on life, asked about my ambition, my education, none of those things. And the sad part is when you go back and listen to these <laughs> red pill content creators, they say that we don't care about that. We don't care about your degrees. We don't care about your career exploits. We don't need a resume on you. We need you to cook. We need you to look good. We need you to wear lashes, but not too big. We need you to get pregnant when we say so and not when we don't. We need you to give us everything that we want and need. And we are creating monsters. It's got nothing to do with the way people look. I can tell you that right now. I've seen and met, I've met attractive men that had very humble, kind hearts who actually were being typecast by women because they were attractive. And it's like, you know, I'm I'm more than this. I want more out of a relationship than this. It's very rare, but I have met them. And I have also met, ooh, ugly men. My second ex-husband was medium ugly. I mean, if you looked at him at the right angle, kind of cute, but for the most part, not so much and was still a narcissist didn't see that one coming did not see that one coming this nigga here that nigga there and so there's no way to vet people off of surface level uh criteria that you have for relationships you've actually got to spend time with people talk to people get to know people and you got to have a matrix of things that you will and won't accept this whole he got to be six feet thing it could block your blessing this whole she's got to be fit feminine and friendly thing it might block your blessing because underneath the rough exterior of some women are very delicate sweet kind compassionate sympathetic souls you know, we got a desire to know each other on a soul level for more than just being in relationship with each other. Some of us could be great friends to each other. Some of us could establish friendships and partnerships and networks with each other that could prove to be more valuable than intimate relationships. You know, you've got, you've got to actually listen to people's heart and care about who they are as people and the circumstances that have brought them <laughs> in your life. Yeah, it take more than two minutes to get to know people. But unfortunately, our microwave, social media, date nap world has reduced everything you need to know about a person down to their zodiac sign, height, weight, <laughs> you know, just these dimensions that don't actually create harmony, that don't build lasting relationships. and. I'm just here to talk about it because I want to challenge that. I want to challenge our superficial ways of coupling today. And I want to hear your opinions on it because I know we've all been casualties of this new system. I know all of us have had people that we genuinely could have maybe formed relationships with had it not been for some superficial thing they had on their mind. And I've even had guys say stuff like, well, my ex used to ski. Like, what does skiing have to do with whether she was a good person or not? You know, my my ex, she used to like that TV show. I can't stand that show. I think people who watch that show, they, they got something wrong with them in their head because she, she used to always pull up stuff that the characters were saying when me and her were getting an argument. Some of y'all really need to heal. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. And it's coming out <laughs> in the way that we're dating each other. If you see what I see and you feel as I feel, you picking up what I'm putting down. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire. Hit both emoji down in the comments i look forward to engaging with you make sure you share this content as well with people that you would like to see expand their consciousness but 
until the next time y'all can go ahead and clock out for me with this this section leaders what is our concept one band one sound one band one sound <laughs>